The network aims to address the significant phenomena of population aging. Minara can contribute to advancing the agenda of healthy aging in our region. The international network brings together a whole host of researchers, carers, advocates and policymakers with the aim to raise awareness of the economic and social implications of changing demographics in the region. We also hope to help improve the lives and well-being of the elderly and their informal carers across countries like Egypt, Lebanon and many more. To get involved in the conversation and send in questions and comments for our panellists, you can do so by writing in the live chat section on whichever platform you're watching on and we'll get those answered for you by our esteemed panellists. Um, the over and the you know, are much in line with the, uh, with the ethos of the United Nations International Institute on Aging. By thanking um, Professor Hussein for inviting WHO to participate in the launch of Minara today and the prioritization of this problem in health policy, in social policy, and so forth. And very often, this is not seen as a, a priority. Minara Network aims to fill this gap and create mechanisms to facilitate much-needed discussions, collaborative opportunities and scientific research into the various aspects of ageing and long-term care. So, do you think there may be gender influences on care strategies in the MENA region? I just want to read out a testimonial that's been sent in uh, from Gamon Omar, who's the Director of, elderly, of the Elderly Department Ministry of Social Development in Palestine. And coming in from um, Suzanne Hamad from the University of Qatar. She's a... What are some of the changes that we're already seeing um, throughout the region? What can we expect to see the picture in the MENA region um, in, in the next decade? Okay. More engagement uh, by the different stakeholders, more cohesive work, uh, less siloed approaches as Marvin had mentioned, uh, and basically a better dignified life for older persons that don't risk the issues of work. And, and we need to recognize baby steps. We need to recognize when you know a positive change happens, just as we recognize the challenges that we face. So, you know, concerted efforts over the span of the next decade will hopefully result in a better well-being and dignified life for older persons. Well, there are plenty of resources, reading activities, videos and contact details as well. <laughs> هتكون سبب في إنه تساعدهم على تخطي المصاعب اللي في الحياة. متر إلا ربع. طب تس... لا... لا... الكبير في السن ده يطلع إزاي؟ مفروض يبقى حاجة قريبة من الإنسان. آه. آه... يبقى في نادي قريب من من منطقة الواحد ما يركبلوش مواصلات يتمشى. You know, a lot of older people are suffering from social isolation, loneliness, and this has an impact on their health, and COVID just uh, exacerbates that. So it's striking that delicate balance between um, protecting older people you know, as a vulnerable group without isolating. Partnering with other agencies and advocacy groups and NGOs to raise awareness and to keep, you know, working with international agencies to say this is a very important topic. Uh, we need to research it, we need to research it properly and we need to, to conduct adequate, um, you know, studies with adequate sample size. Uh, and we hope that, you know, um, you know, research funders will, will, will listen to us. We have a role to play in promoting this agenda and, um, and working with the media, as Dr. Hoda said, because uh, the public awareness is very important in terms of um, raising the priority of, of these issues.